Hello, welcome to Workshop 1138. I'm Robin and today I'm going to be working on making a gaming table. Um, now I've decided to go for something that's uh, a square design uh, with a raised lip around the edge and the sort of inspiration from this is looking at uh, various mahjong tables. I've recently bought, purchased a set of mahjong tiles from eBay and as I buy a lot of things from eBay um, and I thought it would also make a very good table for playing card games and general board games. Um, uh, one of the things that's uh, very useful for Mahjong, where you've got your little plastic tiles, is that they can be sort of lined up against the uh, sort of lip along the edge and that gives you a nice straight row and also they don't fall on the floor. Um, the dining table that I've got here, which is a, a round one, is, is really slightly too large and I think with a lot of board games it would actually be more helpful to have a square table. So this is going to be collapsible so it's going to have these sort of uh, locking hinges uh, so that's the where it would be if the leg was in the sort of folded away position and by releasing this catch and lifting it up we can have the leg in the upright position, which is obviously pointing down. So if you imagine this is the bottom of the table, that is how a leg would be affixed. So this is a 41 millimeter square um, hemlock, and it's a staircase spindle, and they're pre-cut to 900 millimeters long, and that's roughly the size that I wanted for the table in the first place. Um, these other pieces are 31, no, sorry, 32 millimeter squared, and these are the same length and also from the same DIY store. Um, the boards I'm going to be using are 12 mil MDF. Um, I've got two of these, and the reason for that is that there's going to be a fixed base piece with the legs attached, and then the top piece um, is going to be sort of circled with these things. Uh, but this is going to be detachable from the base and the reason for this is the top can then be taken away and recovered. So um, I'm going to actually cover it with a, a sort of foam called uh, scrim foam. Uh, it's the type of um, stuff that you get in the roof of, you know, they, they upholster the roof of the inside, the inside roof of cars uh, with that sort of stuff and then a layer of felt on top uh, and that should give a nice because it's actually quite difficult to pick things like cards up from a surface that's very hard and very solid but if it's got a little bit of give you can sort of get your fingers under it and um, pick things up more easily. To give you a better view of that locking hinge um, that's when the leg is in the down position and that is the folded position. Uh, what I'll have to do is because this uh, spindle is just very slightly too large to fit in that gap I'll have to just take a, a millimetre or so off one of the sides using the router. Um, I'm also going to router these uh, edge pieces as well um, and that will mean that they will overlap this board by probably about 12 millimeters or so. Here we have two damaged pieces of timber but I can use them uh, to demonstrate how everything fits together. Uh, we've got four of these top rails formed, which will be formed together into a square, four of these bottom rails which will be formed together into a square and then we sort of will be screwing the two squares one on top of the other. Um, if we look at the bottom of this piece there's a routed section where there will also be some uh, metal angle brackets and we've also got that in the bottom now obviously the one in the top top rail when these two pieces are secured together will be concealed I'm not that bothered about the one at the bottom provided that the screws don't stick out and cause anybody any problems um, as far as the two uh, routed sections where the MDF is going to sit so in the bottom 
it will sit like that and it will sit fairly flush with the uh, with the edge and that will be glued and screwed in place and permanently fixed in the top section the um, MDF will actually be floating so it'll be securely secured to the uh, to the one below with a few screws to make sure it doesn't move about but it will be not glued in place so we've got a slight gap here as well because I uh, routed a slightly deeper groove and we're going to have um, our scrim foam and felt layer um, sitting on top of this so it'll hopefully it will grip it a little bit around the edges but it won't completely crush it I've pre-cut eight of these uh, hemlock spindles with 45 degree mitres at each end. Um, I actually found this rather difficult to do. Um, one of the things was that the saw tended to keep wandering so that one of these uh, corners was actually raised more than the others. So I ended up sort of, with trial and error, um, sort of just applying a little bit of a twist to the, the handle as I was sawing in and out. I also had to put some tape along the edge of the rest on the back of the saw. It's not exact uh, and what I've done is I've ended up um, keeping some of the sawdust that was taken when I cut the, uh, cut the corners off here and what I'll do is probably when I'm fitting these together um, after the fact I can go through mix it with some wood glue and just sort of rub that in the gaps um, and that should give a slightly better uh, looking joint than just leaving it bare. I've had massive problems with using the router on this wood. Now I don't know if it's my spindle speed, whether my blade's blunt, or whether it's something to do with hemlock and the direction of the grain or whatever, but as you can see I've had massive uh, amounts of splinters um, that have broken off some of the pieces. Now these will be fine for the underneath where it won't show, obviously I'll have to tidy that up in case anybody catches themselves on, we don't want splinters. The four edge pieces that are going on the top are going to be overlapping the fabric. Now this one really isn't up to scratch because we've had so much uh, chip out. So I'm cutting another one and I'm trying a different tack this time. Instead of using a larger router bit with uh, and taking very small uh, 
pieces off in layers. I've, I've actually gone now the full height of what I need to remove, but I'm using this 6mm bit and taking just like a sort of millimeter or so at a time. So far, so good. Well, I don't know if it was something to do with differences in the wood, such as the grain, but if you look at the piece I'm, I've replaced and the piece I've replaced it with, um, I think there's a much, much nicer, uh, smoother result on this piece. I'm going to dry fit everything together before gluing. Um, I've got the two 86 centimeter squared boards uh, underneath, one there, one on top. That will help me square everything up. And I'm going to pre-drill and put some screws in. To try and pull these two pieces together a bit tighter, I'm going to drill very slightly off centre. So that when I put the screws in, um, it'll sort of pull up two pieces of wood together. That's the plan anyway. I'm just going to take these two out and slowly work my way around the outside. One of the things I'm also going to do is to just bend the brackets ever so slightly and what we should have is that when those are screwed together tightly it will it should make sure that these top edges forced together that little bit tighter. So with some felt dropped over that board, let's put the frame back in place. Okay, and we'll just have a look at the top edges. So this is the lip that the uh, players are going to be able to lean on. Uh, whatever's left from these mitres, which uh, none of them were entirely perfect. Some of them are better than others. I think by the time we've sort of sanded and filled everything, that one's really nice. Um, I think we're going to have quite a nice result. I'm going to use these two, the two big boards, one on top of the other, as uh, something to try and give it a stable base. There's a little bit of parcel tape here, which I've put in just to make sure that we don't stick to this bit of wood and I don't get glue on the carpet. Um, and all it remains to do now is to put a little bit of glue on the joints. I'm going to go slightly shy of the front there because uh, I know that those corners need to be uh, rounded off later with some sandpaper um, so I'd rather not have glue in there to contend with and once I've glued it I just put the screws back in and leave it overnight.
just used a damp paper towel to remove any stray glue.